Hey everyone, it's Johnny from Ignite. Thank you for joining me in this brand new video. We are going to be talking about craft of writing, the reflection aspect, the reflective writing component of the craft of writing. So that's what you do after you do the composition. We're gonna be looking at how to write an introduction for the reflection. All right, so with our reflections, with the craft of writing, we know that in the craft of writing, there are often two things that are asked of you in the exam. Sometimes only the composition, but often you're asked to compose a piece of writing, whether it's imaginative, discursive, persuasive, often you'll get a choice. But we saw with the 2020 HSE paper, you won't always get a choice. They are specifically about imaginative writing. But at least in your internal assessments at school, you'll often be given a task where you get a choice to write a piece that's either in the imaginative, discursive, or persuasive form, and then there'll be part B. And part B is gonna hold you accountable to make sure that you actually use the styles of writing that you studied in your prescribed texts, or at least one of those texts, and actually use that in your own writing. So convince us that you actually made a conscious effort to try and emulate the writing style of someone you have studied. Okay, that's what part B is about, convincing the marker. Be accountable, explain to us the process by which you went through and actually looked at the style of someone else and then emulated that and reproduced that style in your own writing, albeit while answering a different question. I say different question, it's not like the original person was answering a question necessarily, but you're talking about different subject matter, hopefully not too different to what they were looking at, but you're gonna preserve similar stylistic elements in the way you write, okay? That's what you're doing in the composition. In the reflection, you need to talk about the stylistic elements that you have used, and then you need to give examples of how you did that, how did you use the same stylistic element as the person you studied, and why did you do it? What's the purpose, what's the effect of doing it? If you don't convince the marker that you know why something has significance, why is it important to use first person narrative voice, right? To use a first person narrative voice, so saying I, giving your story in that way, often it humanizes the character, for instance. So if you don't say that second part, the effect, the why, you're not gonna go nearly as well. The other thing you need to do is you need to talk about the purpose for which the composer you studied used that stylistic feature and the purpose for which they used it and the purpose for which you used it may not be the same and you can make that clear in the paragraphs. So I typically structure the whole reflection like this. We do an introduction, one to two sentences. We're gonna go through that today. Two body paragraphs and a one sentence conclusion. Very simple. In the two bodies, you are outlining the stylistic elements there and you can pause the video at this point if you wanna have a read through that but then you're getting evidence from both the prescribed text that you studied and from your own text that you just composed in part A. That's the critical thing. You're now a text that you yourself are studying. You're studying your own text in the same way that you're studying someone else, right? So you're studying those two texts together and you're gonna pull evidence from each of them, from their composition and your composition, and you're gonna be explaining why you did it and how you were inspired by that particular composer in writing your piece, okay? So you can pause that and read through that. That's the overall structure. But when we talk about the elements of an introduction, I need you to pay attention to these particular aspects because this is it. Just make sure that your introduction has these things and I'll show you how to actually express them in a second. So you need to mention the prescribed text. It's, you've got to choose a module C text. Sometimes questions will say you can choose a module A, B or C text but never will you be prevented from using a module C text, but you may be prevented from using a mod A or B text or your common module text. So don't rely on those because they're not safe. A question may only ask for you to use a module C prescribed text as the inspiration for your own writing. So that's what I would prepare for 100%. Don't look at the other ones. Although you might use them implicitly because you've studied them or you use them as a secondary thing, but you don't actually need to mention them in the reflection. Okay, so you're gonna mention that prescribed module C text. You're gonna talk about the stylistic features that you drew from that text, okay? Usually you only need a maximum of two. Now again, you can use lots of different stylistic elements, but you'll probably only need to talk about two. Sometimes the questions say at least one. What you then need to make sure you do is talk about the purpose for which you used those stylistic elements. What did they add? What, what did you learn about those elements 
in the way that they can add value to your piece? What do they help you achieve when you write a composition? You need to state that in broad terms in the introduction. And then you need to make sure that you've answered the question, obviously. But typically, reflection questions are not that difficult. They're just asking you to justify the creative decisions you made in part A. So part A question, the part A question where you compose something, that will be the tricky thing. But then the reflection often just says, tell us how you did that. Tell us how you thought about it and how you used a text you studied to inform your writing. There may be a couple of other specific elements to a reflection question. So do read through the question carefully and make sure you also address that in the introduction and throughout. So here's an example of a question provided by Nessa in one of the sample papers. And you often see a question of this kind as the part B reflection question in papers across the board. Justify the creative decisions that you have made in your writing. It doesn't explicitly say to tell us about the stylistic elements of a prescribed module C text, but more often than not, they do. It's just this implicitly means do that. So you still are going to refer to a prescribed text, even when it doesn't explicitly say so. So here is an exemplar for a persuasive text. It doesn't matter that this is for a persuasive, right? For you, this is still going to be relevant. It doesn't matter that it's for a persuasive because the point of this is to show you how to express yourself, how to actually introduce, and it can be applied for an imaginative or a discursive composition. So look at the emboldened terms especially, okay? Inspired by the persuasive rhetoric of George Orwell's essay, Politics and the English Language. If you happen to do that text, lucky you. My composition seeks to, so you say, what have I been inspired by? See how I've just ticked off the prescribed text element? Now I'm ticking off purpose. My composition seeks to project the contemporary equivalent of a world whose capacity for conscious thought has been thwarted by the imprecision of modern language. Very fancy terms there, yes, some sophistication. A student of mine actually did this and I worked with them on it, but that takes time, that's refinement. That's a long process of tweaking and editing. So don't expect to come up with this first go, if you can, that's great. But the point is don't be overwhelmed by seeing that. I want you to pay attention to these bits. This is how you frame the sentence. It's gonna make it easy for you, just fill in the gaps and then work on refining over time to make it a bit more sophisticated. Look at the second sentence. In particular, by emulating, again, I'm using that, these are nice words for a reflection task. By emulating Orwell's interwoven use, so here I'm gonna bring in the stylistic elements, of relatable concrete examples from everyday life and constant anti-metabolies, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that correctly, but these are the two techniques. I have attempted to confront my contemporary audience with a meta-level critique of society's excessive intolerance for politically incorrect language, okay? So we've clearly conveyed the purpose for which we are writing and for which we have used those stylistic elements. And we've noted that Orwell himself used those stylistic elements. So we're using them and we're using them to do this task. Okay, so we've clearly justified the decisions we've made. Okay, that's a good example for you. I will show you other examples in future videos. I hope you enjoyed that. That's how you do an introduction. Take away these key phrases from what I just showed you, inspired by my con composition seeks to, specifically by emulating, I have attempted to. Great words to use throughout. Use that personal language, right? I, my, you have to use that. It's a personal reflection. It's not like an essay. So hopefully that offers a lot of value for you, helps you get started on those reflection drafts. If you have enjoyed the video, please do like it. Subscribe to our channel, click that bell, leave a comment below if you've got any questions and tune into our future videos and any past videos that we may have already posted on the craft of writing to complement your study of this unit. And make sure you check out ignitehse.com.au. Check out our website for very comprehensive resources on the craft of writing, tons of other materials for all of your essays, for comprehension, everything you need for the HSC syllabus is on our website. So check out that platform when you get a chance. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.